It's actually amazing. <laughs> this is gold in the form of chum. Squidward, my friend, this recipe is going to make you a star. One of the more underrated and underappreciated episodes from SpongeBob season seven or eight, it's either seven or eight, is Chum Frita Cache. I probably said it wrong. Let me do a quick Google search. Okay, I just searched and it's Chum Fricasse, I think. I don't know. But anyways, this episode has one mistake and this one is actually like really bad. Take a look at this ridiculousness. I'm so sorry, sir. I'm not showing any O rapper. Reservation? In this sinkhole? There's a two year wait for a table. If it isn't Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob. Now just follow me. I believe I have a table reserved just for you. <laughs> See you in two years! <laughs> like I said, this one's pretty bad. It's actually really bad, but when the people are laughing at SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs and the camera pans to Old Man Jenkins, there's actually a magic, mystical glass of water just floating outside of the table. Like, it's literally just floating there. Like, look at it. This is some Harry Potter stuff right here. I guess Old Man Jenkins is from Gryffindor. He's a wizard, but uh, yeah, that glass of water is floating and that is like a really bad mistake. So let's keep it moving and head over to another episode though. Let's go. That gooey little varmint's mighty hungry. <laughs> it may not look like much to you and me, but this here's forced her dying into a snail. But old Patrick here don't seem ready to share his meal. <laughs> I'm gonna make this one quick because the mistake is pretty subtle and the mistake happens really fast anyways. The mistake can be found in the episode Gary and Spot and roll the footage. Locked doors are never a problem for a snail like Gary. Huh? Oh Marvel, you could catch every snail a Bikini Bottom, but the only thing you've really caught his loneliness. Hmm? <laughs> <gasps> He's beautiful. Yeah, so these two characters are Marvin and Alice, and at one point they go to a carnival. But a big part of this plot is that when they go to the carnival, it's nighttime. But if you actually take a look when they arrive at the carnival, it's sunny and bright outside, right? Like you can see it's sunny and bright outside, but if we rewind back to this scene, it's nighttime. So a really strange continuity error. And guys, I'm not even gonna waste more time on this one. Let's head over to another episode with much crazier mistakes than this one. That's it, Mike! Let me kill a locksmith! No, I don't need any old locksmith. P Patrick, help! <laughs> Patrick, die! P Patrick, D don't you think maybe <laughs> that you shouldn't? <laughs> Man. This card is fantastic! See, I told ya, we're back with regular SpongeBob, and we're gonna be talking about the episode The Card, which has some hilarious scenes. Here, take a look at some of these hilarious gags from the episode. The episode actually really hits. It's a good episode. Ooh, Mermaid Man's bubble-powered wheelchair from season 12! Ah! And Barnacle Boy's bunions! Holy scallops, these must be the most valuable cards in the world! Those cards aren't worth nothing. I wouldn't put those cards in the spokes of my bike. Oh boy, let's see which card I got. Is this a good card, SpongeBob? No, it's just another. Mummy Man says, buy more cards. Number 54, that's the best card there is. I can't let anything happen to that card. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy would never forgive me. Patrick, look out! <laughs> It 
was close. See, I told ya. Also, I just want to say it's really funny that they did like a card game on SpongeBob. Imagine SpongeBob opening up like Pokemon cards. Dude pulls like a first generation Charizard. Holy cow. But anyways, let's get into the mistakes, guys. Here's the first one. You can have your card now. I hope you get as much use out of it as I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Mermaid Man card number 54, the special talking one! Well, what about these? So for this mistake to really make sense, I want you guys to take a look at this card right here. It's called card number 54. As you can see, there is a giant fist in the art of this card punching Barnacle Boy right here. Ouch, poor Barnacle Boy, dude, that must have hurt. Well, at one point in the episode, Patrick shows SpongeBob four number 54 cards at once. And if you look at all of them, they're accurate, except for the second one, as the second one just doesn't show the giant fist punching Barnacle Boy. I have no no clue like what happened here dude but it's just it's kind of funny because they're all the same card but just this one version the second one is missing a part of the art totally a mistake and wait there's more here's another mistake let's see if you guys can catch it keep those eyes peeled next oh no hey Quincy how's my favorite money man here you are sir thank you hmm uh Quincy this one is wrinkled. Uh, here, try this one. Mm, uh, this one smells funny. Oh, come on! Would you hurry up? This is another weird one. So in the opening shot of the inside of the bank, this character right here, Incidental 29, appears after Incidental 107. But when the fish tells SpongeBob to hurry it up, Incidental 23 now replaces Incidental 49. When Incidental 23 was never even in the opening shot, this was just like weird. And this all happens in a matter of seconds. So yeah, definitely a mistake here. I'm so glad you all could make it. Tonight is going to be a magical evening filled with magic. Can we skip the magic and get right to the free money? How about the latte zipping? And what about the pumping of the iron? The real reason I called you here was to watch this slideshow of photos from my family vacation. I, I knew, knew it was too good, good to be true. true. Want to know what would be a ton of fun? Going on a family vacation with SpongeBob's mom and dad. And that's exactly what happens in the episode, A SquarePants Family Vacation. And it's a good episode. The plot is like fire in this episode. But of course, the episode has mistakes. And and here's the first one, guys. Keep those eyes peeled. Let's see if you can spot it. Okay, find me! He can! This one is gonna require us slowing down some footage, okay? Because it happens so quickly and it's very easy to miss. So, when this boat is crashing through the Bikini Bottom Outskirts Mega Mall, there are these two incidentals right here who are walking near the edge. Now, if we slow down the footage as this scene takes place and the crash happens, these two incidentals disappear way too early. You can see they're supposed to disappear a little bit later on, but if you slow it down, you can see they kind of just cut out of there way too early and it is they just cease to exist. They just go poof, and it looks very, very weird. But that's not it for weird occurrences in this episode. This next mistake is even weirder, dude. Look at this. You brought homework? No, Patrick. It's a brochure detailing all the fun to be had at our final destination, the Great Barrier Reef. I can't wait to get there. How about you? No, I can't. Yeah. No, I mean, I really can't. I've been in this confined space too long already. Help! All right, boys. All right. Let's turn down the volume back there. Why don't we play a road game to pass the time? Yeah! Anybody know any? Ho, 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 ho! Hide seek! <laughs> Why does he get to go first? This one is admittedly more subtle, but it's still like a mistake. So Patrick's seatbelt, as you can see here, it's on while he's viewing the map. They're in the car and he has a seatbelt on, you know, that's that's good. Kids, if you're ever in the car, make sure to wear your seatbelts, just like Patrick is right here. But when Margaret Squarepants, SpongeBob's mom, suggests playing a road game to pass the time, um, Patrick's seatbelt just disappears. I don't think the dude took his seatbelt off, but I think happened here is the animators originally 
originally drew him with the seatbelt, but then we're feeling a little lazy for this scene because, you know, Patrick has to move around and just didn't draw the seatbelt again, making for a continuity error, a pretty bad one. And that's not it. We've got more mistakes in today's video, guys. Stay tuned. This next one is nutty. Oh, oh, I love games. Me too. You must know a lot about sports, Squidward. Uh, will you teach us how to play? I'd be happy to teach you all about sports, SpongeBob. The episode Sports is a pretty good episode from season 10. What did you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments. What I know for sure, though, is that this episode has two spicy mistakes. Here's the first one. Take a look. Ah, oh, come on! We came to see some action! See you on the court, your highness. Hey, Squidward! Check! I will admit this first one is a tiny bit of a nitpick, but it's still like a real mistake, all right? So pay attention to this character right here, Incidental 64. As you can see, their eyes are white, all right? Like you can see it right here on your screen. They have white eyes. Well, when Sandy and Squidward are about to play some basketball, when they're about to shoot some hoops, make some dunks, Kobe! While this is happening, Incidental 64's eyes are like a deep murky blue color instead of white, which is totally a mistake. Normally, they look like this, they're beautiful white eyes, but in this one shot, they're like this random color. Again, I'm kind of nitpicking, this is a subtle mistake, but this next mistake in this episode is much worse. Take a look at this. Check. Yeah, so take a look at this shot of the crowd, and you'll notice that there are a ton of duplicates of incidentals, which is super lazy. There is more than enough incidentals, guys, that they could have filled out this entire crowd with different incidentals. But look, this one incidental appears like three or two times in the same shot, which is very lazy, but let's keep the video moving and head over to, yet again, another episode with more mistakes. Welcome to our parlor. <laughs> Maybe can take a hint. Now, as I always say, guys, do not click off the video yet. I'm going to get back to regular SpongeBob, but for one section, just one section, we're gonna switch up the flow a little bit and talk about another show in the SpongeBob universe, Camp Coral. It's almost Halloween, so let's talk about the Halloween special, Scaredy Squirrel. It has one mistake, rule the footage. Sandy, are you asleep? Wake up! <laughs> It's more of a friend emergency. We're gonna have a sleepover at the Trawler Cabin. Oh, but they're so unnatural. Listen up, guys. So Camp Coral is 3D animated. It isn't made like SpongeBob is made, which is 2D animation. So because of that, there isn't a ton of mistakes in Camp Coral. There's only a few. And when there is a mistake, it's actually a pretty big deal. Now, the mistake in question for this episode has to do with Sandy and her hammock. As if you watch closely, Sandy seems to clip through her hammock multiple times. Clipping is when like your arm goes through an object it shouldn't go through. So as you can see here, Sandy Sandy's just clipping through the hammock and it looks so weird, guys. Talk about a mistake. Let's head back over to regular SpongeBob though, guys. I know that's what you really want, all right? Regular SpongeBob, let's do it. <laughs> this is a stick up. Don't do nothing stupid. <laughs> Patrick Starr with In Action News. The public wants to know the man behind the baby. My name is Tony Tuna. I'm a Capricorn and I like taking candy from babies. <laughs> Thank you. So we always be talking about good old fashioned SpongeBob and don't get it twisted. I love this yellow sponge, okay? But I also love this pink and dumb starfish. So let's take a break from SpongeBob for one section. We're gonna go back to SpongeBob, don't worry. But let's take a break for a section and talk about the Patrick Star Show. Keep those eyes peeled. Let's see if you can spot it. <laughs> Johnny Law shows up. Okay. 
Guys, hold hands. <laughs> this one is just like really funny, dude. When you see it, you'll laugh because I have no idea how the animators would have made this mistake. But when Incidental 118D gets out of the car, she is bright pink with blonde hair. As you can see right here, I'm zooming in. I really want you guys to remember this. It's important to the mistake. This shorty right here is pink with blonde hair. She's looking like a Barbie. But then in the very next shot, she completely changes and looks like this. To be fair, this is how she normally looks in other episodes. Like the whole pink and blonde hair thing was just for this episode. But Shorty literally just changes her entire color scheme in a matter of seconds. First, she's pink with blonde hair and now she looks like this. To my girls watching though, which one did you prefer? Which color scheme looks more fresh, right? Which one did you prefer? But anyways, let's keep the video moving guys. <laughs> Next up is the season 12 episode, Farmer Bob, which is, in my opinion, a good season 12 episode. I actually enjoyed it, but before we get into the mistakes, here is a really funny clip from this episode. I'm gonna make it real quick, guys. Your final chore is harvesting my coat pack. <laughs> That'll take forever. Not if you use my tractor. But, but I don't have a tractor license. I got lots of licenses. Wow, Patrick, you're really good at this. I don't let anything distract me. Oh, a bee! Oh, 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 jelly bees! Oh, 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 oh. Okay, let's get into the mistakes. Well, the mistake. There's only one in this episode and it's like really bad. Roll the footage. <laughs> Party's over. Over? Why is just getting started? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've seen your invitation. This one, it's really easy to like not catch the mistake, guys. Even me, when I was looking for this one, I had a hard time. But during this exterior nighttime shot of the barn, when this tractor drives by and everybody is supposed to be dancing, the characters dancing are not actually looped correctly. It's supposed to be like a smooth loop where they dance and it just keeps on repeating. But as you can see right here, I'm showing it in slow motion and I'm zooming in. The loop is just off and it looks really weird guys this was a bad mistake and we have more let's head over to another episode do not click off the video help there's a baby in that building <laughs> Guys, it's time for another brief, really quick departure from good old fashioned Spongebob so that we can talk about another big show in the Spongebob universe, that being the Patrick Star Show. The episode in question is Uncredible Journey, and before we get into the mistake, here are some funny clips from this episode. Seriously guys, give the Patrick Star Show a chance. Just check out these clips and then we'll get right into the mistakes. It's morning at the Star family home, and everyone is still tucked snugly in their beds. <laughs> Everyone except Alchie the sea urchin and Pink Eye the sea bunny. They're going to visit their best friend, Tinkle, the upstairs toilet. Ah, bluefish! I gotta go, I gotta go! See, it's not so bad, guys. You gotta give this show a chance. It's actually pretty fun. It's nice to see Patrick have his own show, even though it's incredibly random. Anyways, though, here's the first mistake. Let's see if you guys can spot it. <laughs>
This one is just like really bad dude, but when Pink Guy, this character right here, jumps down the pile of trash to the dump, take a look at his mouth as it's missing for an entire frame. Like his mouth just goes bye bye for an entire frame, which I mean, it's only for one frame, so it's not that big of a deal, but dude, where's his mouth? What happened here? SpongeBob, I spent six long months on that painting. Don't worry, Squidward. Shiny's made of salt. We'll just wash it off. There you go, good as new. Next up is another quick one, and it's very similar to the mistake we covered in the episode Planet of the Jellyfish. It takes place in the episode Bubble Buddy Returns. Here are some funny scenes from this episode first, though. Guess he's not home. Oh well, we can try again later. Wait, Shiny, where are you going? Squidward, this room is so full of sharp, jagged, broken things. This is no place for a delicate little bubble boy. There he is. Don't worry, I'll save him. Jagged glass, barbed wire, cactuses. Cactus is protected by barbed wire. Gotcha! No, guess not. He's headed right for my glass menagerie. Shiny, I'll get you down. Gotcha. Of course. Dude, it is so cool seeing Bubble Buddy return. This dude debuted back in season one, two, or three, so it's awesome to see him back. What isn't so awesome to see, though, is the mistake in this episode. Roll the clip. Perhaps this letter will shed some light on your origin. My old friend, Bubble Buddy. Wonder what's up with him? Could you please watch our sun shiny until we get back? I owe you one, your pal, Bubble Buddy. Oh boy, did you hear that, Gary? They want me to watch Little Shiny. Yeah, so just like that mistake back in Planet of the Jellyfish, the same thing happens here. As when SpongeBob reads the letter from Bubble Buddy, the spots on Gary's shell swap colors. Like seriously, look at this. This is incorrect. I'm gonna do another side by side. This is how Gary's shell should look, and this is how it looks in this one scene of Bubble Buddy Returns, which is a blatant error. And guys, I've got a couple more mistakes in another episode. Let's head over to that other episode. Let's do it. You know don't know what it's like to be a loser. Aw, cheer up, Plankton. <laughs> I think you're a winner. What? What did you say? I said you're a loser! Let's get this party started with a good old fashioned season one episode, the season one banger, Fun. Who remembers this song? F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. Dude, what a classic. I love old school SpongeBob. Unfortunately though, I've got some childhoods to ruin today, as Fun has a lot of episodes, three to be exact, and here's the first one. Roll the clip. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Listen up! Mr. Krabs? He's deceiving you! Reach into his pocket now and take what he's got! I can't believe this! Okay, okay, I see it! It's a Krabby Patty, okay? I couldn't help it. But then you showed me friendship, and now I realize that's all I ever really wanted. Really? No, not really. Did you guys catch that as it's really bad? But while Plankton says he took the Krabby Patty, let's slow down the footage and take a look at the bottom of his legs as they just glitch out and keep disappearing and reappearing. It looks really weird. I don't know what's going on here. And that is definitely an animation mistake. This dude's legs are just tweaking. They're tweaking out. And there's more mistakes in this iconic episode. Take a look at this. And here's a little hint. Don't only use your eyes for this one. Also use Use your ears because it also has to do with audio. How does it feel to be the most hated thing in Bikini Bottom, Plankton? It hurts, doesn't it? We're gonna make this kid honorary town rookie of the day. <laughs> for he's a jolly good rookie, for he's a jolly good rookie, for he's a jolly good rookie. 
This next mistake has to do with audio. So if you guys missed the mistake in those clips, it's it's understandable because it's, you know, it's audio. Related. But let me explain. During the singing of For He's a Jolly Good Rookie, when they're celebrating SpongeBob for defeating Plankton, I want you guys to take a look at the crowd, as from what we can see, they are all male fish, all right? Male fish in the crowd. But if you listen closely, there's a female voice heard singing along. Now, of course, we're progressive here on Grapple. Don't get it twisted. You can be whatever you want to be. But this episode came out in like the late 90s. So this was definitely a mistake. Listen to the clip again right here. You'll hear it's a female voice. Or he's a jolly good rookie. Or he's a jolly good rookie. Like I told you, it's a female voice. You just heard it. And look at the crowd. It's all men. So this was technically a mistake given the time. And there's another mistake in this episode. Take a look at this one. Let's see if you guys can spot it. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere and anytime at all. Down here in the deep blue sea. All right, so stay tuned as after this mistake, we're going to be getting into the craziest mistakes in the video. So again, stay tuned, but staying on topic. If you look at the clam's mouths in this scene, they are out of sync with the animation during the fun song. This one's really hard to catch. So to make things easy, I'm just going to play the clip again, but this time in slow motion. And again, keep an eye on those clam's mouths. Down here in the deep blue sea. No one, not even your parents, would want to see that. All right, so let's get things popping with our first episode of today. It is a banger, a classic. I loved this episode back when I was little cartoon Cory, and it's Culture Shock. For those who don't remember it, here's a hilarious scene from the episode. <laughs> Dude, this episode was such a massive part of my childhood, and I'm sure it was a massive part of yours as well. But I'm sorry, guys, I kind of got to ruin your childhood right now because this episode has two mistakes. Take a look at this. Don't worry, Squidward. I'm going to come up with the most cultured act ever. The only culture that guy has is in his tennis shoes. Ha! Ha! Tennis shoes. Ha! The Krusty Krab Tower Show featuring the finest talent. Wow! A full house! <gasps> There's mom and dad. Hello, I'm Mr. Krabs, and I like money. Okay, so take a look at this, guys. This clock right here, it's on top of these doors, all right? And it's present throughout the episode for the most part, but not really, that's actually the mistake. As before the talent show, it just randomly disappears. It's there, but then before the talent show, it just disappears, and then it later reappears later on during Gary's poetry. So yeah, a bit of a continuity error here. There was the clock, it's gone, and then it's back. So yeah. And guys, there's another mistake in this episode that's even worse. Take a look at this and here's a little hint. It has to do with the curtains. Uh, um, uh, good evening and, and welcome to the first annual Squidward Tentacles Talent Show. Ah! Hey Squidward, listen, what do you think? When I mop, should I go forward and back? No, no, wait, side to side. And now, poetry by Gary. So like I said, those curtains, right? There's a massive mistake here. So at first, they look like this. They're red, as you can see right here. But then during the actual talent show, the curtains change colors throughout the episode. They change to green at one point, and then they change to purple, when originally they were red. So it goes red, green, purple. Yeah, talk about a mistake, dude. And guys, stay tuned as the next mistakes we're going to be talking about are even worse, dude. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> Oh, but it's funny out here. And it's cold. And the sky's crying. There you go. Let's take another really, really, really quick break from SpongeBob and talk about another show from the SpongeBob universe, Camp Coral. Again, I'm going to make it quick. The episode is Tag Your It, and here's the mistake. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Are we all ready for an epic, monumental outdoor game of Tag? All right, all right, go. Get out of my hair. Yeah! <laughs> I told you to play out 
outside. So during the scene where all of the kids go outside to play before it starts raining, okay, we can see these cabins in the distance behind SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy. All right, remember these cabins right here. It's while it's sunny out. But then when it rains and ruins their fun, it becomes a rainy day and they go running back inside. Take a look as those cabins are gone. Here's a side by side. It's like the cabins were there and then they were too lazy to put the cabins in again when they went back out. And this is the same shot and this happened in a matter of seconds. So there's no reason for the cabins not to be there. Anyways, we're just gonna head back over to good old fashioned SpongeBob. But a quick reminder, I respond to the comments of all subscribers. So right now guys, click subscribe, click that button, do it, do it, do it. Because if you subscribe and then comment, I'll respond to your comment for sure within the next seven days. So do it, write your comment right now. All right, back to the mistakes, back to SpongeBob. You'll need an official Krusty Krab hat. Uh... Say, that's a pretty neat trick. I'm gonna get some extra mayonnaise from the back. No mayonnaise! Okay. Coming in hot, first up is the episode Planet of the Jellyfish, which in my opinion is an episode that isn't talked about a lot when it comes to SpongeBob. The episode's pretty good. Of course though, it has some mistakes. It has two to be exact. Here's the first one. Whoa, look at all the customers. One Krabby Patty, hold the mayonnaise. Thank you, come again. Brah! Don't you want a cute little jellyfish? <laughs> no thanks. You can use this jelly as a pillow. Oh, that's okay, I, I have one at home. <laughs> <laughs> so take a look at this dude over here, Incidental 27. As you can see, he has a tail fin. It's right here, all right? You can see it right here. Well, the mistake is that when SpongeBob first enters the Krusty Krab during this scene, um, Incidental 27 is missing that tail fin. It was there in this shot later on in the episode when he's seen growling at SpongeBob, he has his tail again, well, his fin tail again. Yeah, definitely a mistake here. For this one shot, it's just missing, and that's not supposed to happen. This next mistake also wasn't supposed to happen. Keep those eyes peeled, and let's see if you guys can spot it. Ah, uh, look at him, the little angel. Good morning, sleepyhead. We wouldn't want anything to happen to you while I'm at work. You better stay in here where it's safe. Did you guys catch it? Well, take a look at our favorite little snail over here, Gary. More specifically, his shell and the colors on his shell. As you can see, the shell is pink, and then there's like these purple or bluish dots on it, and then there's like this red swirl on it, right? All right, you can see it right here. Well, whoever animated this episode needs to be educated on our favorite little snail, as just before Gary is engulfed by a gelin, um, take a look at this dude's shell as that's not right. The colors have been inverted. I'm gonna do a side-by-side, this is how it's supposed to look on the left. Yeah, on the right, that is a mistake. It's not supposed to look like that. Gary, you poor snail. But let's head over to another episode, guys, with more mistakes. Let's go. When you write these stories, you gotta use a little imagination, boy. Imagination. Yeah. Maybe instead of man watches pole, you could say something like, oh, Man, Mary's pole! We talk a ton about SpongeBob season one, two, and three, or seasons like 11, 12, and 13 on this channel all the time. But let's go smack dab right into the middle with season six, the episode being the Krabby Chronicle, an episode all about a crusty crab newspaper. It's wild. What we're really here to talk about though, guys, is what you guys clicked on the video for are the spicy mistakes in this episode. Roll the footage and let's see if you guys can spot it. Well, gee, Mr. Krabs, I've written about everyone in town. Any ideas, sir? Surprise me! Give me a shocker! Oh, the wildest story ever, huh? How's it going, lad? It's a surprise! Did you catch it? Well, after Mr. Krabs leaves his office for the night and SpongeBob begins typing on the press, take a look at Mr. Krabs' office door, okay? It's right behind SpongeBob. This is important. It's right there. You can see it. It's right there. But in the very next shot, um, where is it? Where did the door go? Did like Mr. Krabs have renovations in a matter of like 30 seconds? I don't think so. I think the animators drew the door, as you can see here. But then in this scene, they forgot to draw it. And just like, how do you even do that? But but anyways, here's another mistake. What a money-tastical day, eh, Mr. Squidward? 
Yeah, I'm just raking it in. I'm excited about all the newspaper sales, too! This next mistake is very similar to the last one, as when Mr. Krabs is walking up to the Krusty Krab, take a look at this poster of a Krabby Patty on the window. It looks delicious, I would love a Krabby Patty, but more importantly, the poster, remember that this poster is right here. As when Mr. Krabs eventually enters the Krusty Krab, the poster that we just seen is just gone now, it's vanished, it just, uh, it doesn't exist anymore, which is another condition continuity error guys. You know, continuity errors aren't that bad I'll admit, but they're still a mistake and guys we've got more mistakes coming up, let's keep it moving. Mr. Krabs! Hey Mr. Krabs, why are your patties dangerous? Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Hey, why are they? Uh, my, my patties are dangerous because, because they're so, uh, uh, they're so... Delicious! Kids got a point. Plankton and Mr. Krabs have had a long lasting rivalry, but things really heat up in the episode Move It or Lose It. Now, the episode has tons of mistakes, but I really want to show you guys what the stakes are for this episode Move It or Lose It, so here's a little bit of a plot summary. <laughs> What's the big idea? Updated city ordinance. Fast food restaurants cannot be within 100 feet of each other. The Krusty Krab and the Chum Bucket are located too close together. One of your restaurants is going to have to be bulldozed. I'm not going anywhere. You're the one who's moving. You are moving. Oh, oh no, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Gentlemen, you have 24 hours to decide which of you moves. That's the law around here. Like I said, there is a lot at stake in this episode. Like it's either the Chum Bucket or the Krusty Krab, which, you know, I would pick the Krusty Krab. I don't know about the Chum Bucket personally. I'm not trying to eat chum. Just look at this stuff. It looks disgusting. Here's a question for you guys. Comment your answer. Would you pick the Krusty Krab or the Chum Bucket? Let me know. But anyways, more importantly, this episode has a mistake. I mean, it's what you guys clicked on the video for. So here's the mistake. Take a look at this. Looks like it's time to proceed to the next phase. Who wants free money? Free? <laughs> okay, okay, one at a time, please. This is another example of SpongeBob laziness, okay? When everyone comes to Plankton for free money, I would take some free money too. Take a look at the crowd as there are many duplicated fish. Like, look at this dude. He appears like two to three times at once. Or this incidental here who appears again two to three times at once. As I've said in many other videos, guys, there is like over 200 incidentals. So there is no excuse for just reusing the same ones. This is just lazy. It's lazy. Not as lazy as the mistakes in this next episode, guys. This is where things get really good. Watch this. Hello, Mrs. Puff. Are we feeling any better? I see you got the flowers I sent. Yes, I'm allergic to them. And you. Let's head over to season eight for this next one. I'm talking about the episode Demolition Doofus. Here are some hilarious clips from this episode. It's a funny one. Okay, drivers, let the destruction begin. <laughs> I can't look! Wait! Yes, I can! Ah! Uh, what the heck? Ah! What? This is not going well. You know, SpongeBob isn't a very good driver, as we've seen over the years, but I guess that kind of helped them in this episode. But anyways, here's the first mistake. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Here's a little hint. It has to do with this character right here, Incidental 41. So what do you say, Captain Lootfish? Will you enter him in the derby? Look out, extra credit. Here I come. <laughs> Look out! to the Bikini Bottom Demolition Derby! The Cruncher! 
So this admittedly is another nitpick, kind of, but it is still like a blatant mistake. But as I said, Incidental 41, right? So take a look at this scene right here and take a look at Incidental 41's lips. As you can see, they're like a pale yellow. Right here, I'm zooming in, remember the color of those lips. But then in the very next scene, literally seconds later, poof, take a look at the lips now, they're blue. I doubt Incidental 41 randomly went and put like lipstick on or something. This was just a weird mistake. First, they're like pale yellow, as you can see here, and now they're blue. Like what? What happened? The same can be said for this next mistake right here. Let's see if you guys can spot this one. Oh dear, I think I'm in that fellow's way. Engage turn signals. Hands at 10 and 2, and finally, Florida! This one is really, really easy to miss, but take a look at this. As you can see, SpongeBob lifts up his left leg to floor it, all right? He lifts up his left leg. But then, like, in the next shot, his right foot is shown on the gas instead when it was his left leg that he, like, lifted up. Not that big of a deal, kind of a minor mistake, but it's still a mistake, and guys, I've got another one. Check out this. This is Pop! What should I- Why are you still alive? Put it in drive! Thanks, Mrs. Pop, you're the best! So take a look at this guy right here, the cruncher, all right? I don't wanna mess with this guy. I don't want no beefs with this man right here. But anyways, look at him. As you can see, he has these back fins. It's a part of his design. They're on his back. They're right here, you can see them. Well, when the cruncher drives away from SpongeBob after he drives over him and nearly ends his life, take a look at the cruncher's back as those fins are just gone. They're missing. What happened? Fish don't just randomly lose their fins. So this was another mistake. Mistake. They drew him with fins, as you can see here, but then in this scene, they were lazy and forgot about them. But hey, mistakes happen. A great fortune has fallen upon you. <laughs> Did you hear that, Gary? The fortune is true! Let's look at your future. Happy trails will follow you always! <gasps> your fortune came true too! We've been talking about a bunch of older Spongebob episodes in today's video. Episodes from like season two, three, six, seven, eight. But it's time for some modern Spongebob, some widescreen. So let's talk about the episode Lame and Fortune. Here's the first mistake. Enjoy your new fortune cookies, crabs! <laughs> Time for a refill! My tentacles are gonna fall off if I don't get a break soon, Mr. Krabs! Yeah, so in the scene right after SpongeBob takes Plankton's fortune cookies, the character Lenny, this guy right here, is shown without his suit on in the wide shot. For a majority of this episode, he's wearing his suit. But in this one shot, his suit just isn't there. They just forgot to draw it. And then in the next shot, the next scene where Squidward asks for a break, look, dude is back in his suit again. So he was wearing his suit, then he wasn't wearing the suit, and now the suit is back on. Like, don't get me wrong, the suit is fresh, but let's have some continuity here, Nickelodeon. This was a mistake. And that's still not it, guys. I've got one more mistake for this episode. Eat your hat and you will fall in love. You need the eyes of a hawk to catch this one, and hopefully you guys did catch this one because it's kind of a classic mistake. This has happened many times. So, when Incidental 114 and Incidental 115 are dancing, look at them, they've got the moves. Take a look at the Galley Grub menu, as it's spelt as G-A-L-L-Y grub, when it's supposed to be G-A-L-L-E-Y grub. So, another mistake there. The sheet's gotta be completely smooth and tight. You made the bed with my old saggy skin! That's a pickle! But hey, 
No wrinkles! All right, let's switch up the flow a little bit. We're always talking about SpongeBob. Let's talk about the Patrick Star Show. And don't worry, guys, I'm gonna head right back over to SpongeBob after this. I know not everybody loves the Patrick Star Show, but anyways, the episode is home eek, and here's the first mistake. Reef Wellington! An A plus for you! <laughs> Next up, we have... Uh... <laughs> Gordina's pickle pie. Aren't you gonna try it? You tried all my other projects. So this one is a blatant animation error, but when Squidina says, aren't you gonna try it, take a look at her arm as it's layered behind her sleeve. As you guys know, an arm is supposed to go through the sleeve, but in this one shot, her arm is behind the entire sleeve, which is just like a blatant mistake. And here's another one from this same episode. Your other project. project. <laughs> <laughs> in it. Excuse me? Huh? You've got something on your shirt. <laughs> Ready, please? This next one is just weird, dude, but when the teacher turns around to face Squidina in this scene, for about a frame, take a look at his tie, as the lines around it, like the outline, just randomly turn green. It's so weird, dude. It's just randomly green. What? Normally it looks like this, but then for one frame, it's green. Such a weird mistake. And here's another one from this episode. Three mistakes in one episode. Squidina, did you save me? How about we save Celebrate with some pickle pie! Is it safe? No! Don't eat it! Well, four out of five doctors can't be wrong! Tastes like an A plus! Wait, does this contain gluten? <laughs> Were you guys able to catch this one? Well, when the teacher asks Squidina about her finished pickle pie, that's disgusting, a pickle pie, that is seriously so gross. But anyways, as the teacher asks this, if you take a look at his hand, it's colored white for a frame. Well, it's more of like a light green or something like that, but it's not the right color. Normally his hands look like this, as you can see, but in this one, they're white. And yeah, that's another mistake. Three mistakes on one episode, that's a lot. Let's head over to another another episode with even more mistakes. What kind of resort is this? Where's the entertainment? Oh, well, you are absolutely right, sir. <laughs> Presenting the SpongeBob Follies. Boring. This next one is spicy, and it takes place in a very underrated episode, that being Patrick's Staycation. I feel like nobody really talks about this episode, and while it isn't the best episode, it does have some really good moments, just like this. Take a look. Welcome to Star Rock Inn, sir. My name is Todd. Can I check you in? I don't know. Can you? Ah, uh, yes. Star, star, star. Patrick Star, room 801. Your key, sir. May I take your bags, Mr. Star? Oh, I don't have any bags. Uh, Follow me, sir. Your room is right this way. Oh, dear. Something wrong, Mr. Star? I, I'm not sure I like the way this room is arranged. Arranged? One hour later. Mr. Star, are you sure about this? You know, I... Maybe it's the walls. It's an interesting episode, right? Now, let's dive into the mistakes, what you guys have been waiting for, what you guys clicked on the video for. Here is mistake number one. One Krabby Patty coming up. You are smoking. <laughs> oh, it was nothing. No, no, you're really smoking. What? Oh no, the Krabby Patty. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. Star, your meal is ready. Patrick, where is he? So I'll admit, this mistake is a bit of a nitpick on my end. It isn't that big of a deal. But when SpongeBob gets out of the burned Krabby Patty, his chef suit had no sleeves. Seems harmless, right? Well, this is kind of a mistake as in every other shot of this episode when SpongeBob is wearing his fresh chef suit over here, it has sleeves. It always has sleeves. But in this one shot, the sleeves are just missing. I mean, like I said, not that big of a deal, but somewhat of a mistake here. This next one though, trust me, this one, is spicy. Oh, 
Patrick! Patrick, what have you done to yourself? I've been waking up, eating, sleeping, waking up. I need a break from the hustle and bustle of my everyday life. I'm so exhausted. Please help me. Pal, what you need is a vacation. That's it! Did you guys catch it? Well, when SpongeBob says, Pat, what you need is a vacation, take a look at our favorite sponge's eyes, as one of his blue eyes turn white for an entire split second. Normally, SpongeBob looks like this and has these beautiful deep blue eyes. He's so handsome. But for this one shot for just about a second, SpongeBob's eyes are to weaken, dude. It's just white. I don't think somebody's eye would just be entirely white. That's uh that's not how it works. Now, that's definitely going to do it for today's video, guys. But but if you want more content like this, click this video right here on screen, where I talk about even more SpongeBob mistakes. And guys, here's a little secret. The mistakes in this video right here are better than the mistakes I even covered in today's video. So click it, click the video, do it. I'll see you guys over there. We can hang out more and talk about more SpongeBob mistakes. Peace.